Well, somebody laughs. You may think that those aeroplanes in this city on 9-11 came out of a clear blue sky. I believe they emerged out of a swamp of hatred created by us. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, no, no, I believe, I believe, I believe that by, I believe, I believe, I believe, please, 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 I believe, I don't have any enemies in Afghanistan. I didn't declare war on anybody in Afghanistan. The Taliban are no, not an enemy. No, uh, no, they're not an enemy to okay. me. It's quite interesting listening to the self-proclaimed Democrat over here in the form of, of George Galloway and thinking of some of the company he keeps. I certainly feel that, that what we're trying to do in Afghanistan, of course, is to nurture this democracy against the um, unlawful and terrorist activities of whatever George may think of them, um, the Taliban. Now, um, I think that's an honourable mission to be engaged in. I think it's a dangerous mission and a difficult one. Uh, what you said about the strength, the courage and indefatigability was, of course, about Saddam Hussein in your famous uh, filmed uh, bit with him in Iraq. The Prime Minister said today uh, there can be no defence against the abuse of democratic rights in any country, mm. talking about Castro. Mm. Uh, do you think he was right? Okay. Viva Fidel! You're a Democrat. D does that pose any problems? in terms of how you viewed Fidel Castro? Well, if people believed the package they've just heard, which could have come from Fox News, you would think that Fidel oh, Castro was I'm some kind of tyrant. Like your Stop friend off. Fidel Castro. He's not a instance. dictator. He's Fidel not a dictator. Castro, don't compare Fidel Why isn't Castro. he a dictator? Don't com compare Fidel Castro to the... He runs what human rights about. watch calls an undemocratic government that represses yeah. nearly all forms of political I'll, dissent. I'll debate Cuba with you any time you like, but I don't know if I've got enough time to do so now, but I'll make this point. I'm flying... Well, you think he's a Democrat, I'm do you? flying this evening to Caracas, Venezuela. What's to that got to do with this? Everything. To speak at a rally at the weekend with the great Hugo Chavez. Oh, we, we, we'll put aside, Bush look, we will put aside the abuse. I'm asking you a simple question about how you see the future of Cuba. Do you think there will be some Socialism. transition? Socialism will survive. I know that makes you sad, but it will survive. I don't think that dictator does it. You know, when Hitler was at the Channel ports, we had a national government we suspended normal politics. We cast Sorry, aside... who's Hitler in this comparison? Well, uh, George Bush. He's the George president. Bush is Hitler, is he? Yeah, don't make me laugh, Mr. Galloway. You have a record as long as my arm of justifying autocracy across the world. And you admire Castro because of the way he rules. Uh, I take pretty much the equal and opposite view to George on this one. And uh, my heroes of the 20th century in terms of politics are people like... John F. Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy, and I've got a lot of respect for the United States of America. And you've got to remember Fidel Castro was a dictator who ruled for a very long period of time, who has passed power on to his brother. That's not the sort of country that I want to live in. Fidel Castro was in charge with, I think, probably the most serious incident of the 20th century that could have been ca catastrophic to the future of this planet, namely the Cuban Missile Crisis. Was and that, that was in my view, the fault of the Russians and the Cubans, not the Western well, world. All the papers seem to imply that you get executed in Iran well, his, for his, being gay. His, That's his, not His boyfriend true. was hung, though, yes, wasn't he? Yes, not for being gay, for um, committing sex uh, crimes. As in Iran, they are persecuted, and those two boys were hung for being gay. I don't know no. what you're talking about. You've got to take them at their word. If they say the leader of Iran says he wants to wipe... Uh, Israel off the face of the earth. He didn't say that, and you know very well he didn't say that. Your record of revisionism in this, re in this region gives you not a lot of right to be authoritative on this. The woman there. <laughs> From the man who congratulated Saddam Hussein on his courage and his <laughs> right, right. yeah. To greet Saddam Hussein in 1994 in Iraq and to salute him for his courage That's and his indefatigability. You're lying again. His, uh, your nose me, is growing. Sir, I salute your courage, your strength, 
your indefatigability. Please, the same point. Please, please many, many right. people have been asking us the same thing. Well, that's, because, that's because you have deliberately teed up this interview I'm with a falsehood. We do, I, not, we do not tee up the questions. You're a bunch of liars and everybody uh, knows that on, you are. Come on, Mr. You have lavished allegedly blandishments on Saddam's regime. Would you, would, do you think life would be better now under that dictatorship, under that totalitarian regime of terror run by Saddam Hussein? Well, I have never lavished blandishments on Saddam Hussein's regime. Sir, I salute your courage, your strength, your indefatigability. I can honestly tell you that there was not a single person to whom I told I was coming to Iraq and hoping to meet with yourself who did not wish me to convey their heartfelt fraternal greetings and support. You're a bunch of liars. I am not an admirer of Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein will live in history long after these dogs at a time when we know through his own admission that Saddam still possessed weapons of mass destruction when the dictator was financing global terror when dissidents were rotting in jail or having their tongues cut out in the street when all this was happening George Galloway went to Iraq stood in front of Saddam and said sir I salute your courage your strength and your indefatigability those who support the invasion of Iraq may have made many mistakes, but not that one. We overestimated his arsenal, certainly. As once you stood next to him, George, and said, and congratulate, and congratulate. Can't you debate the issue you congrat without I could, me? if you'd be quiet for a second. Uh, certainly, we we underestimated his arsenal, but at least we saw clearly Saddam's ruthlessness and his murderous nature. We didn't congratulate people on calling their children Saddam. What about Mr. Sharon? Galloway? Tell us about argue, Sharon, the again with the Jews. Can Tell us about Sharon, that, the again Mother. with the Jews that we should not have contained Saddam and not toppled him, for he opposed every measure, George, to constrain this fascist dictator. And now, so Sharon, as you vote, I ask you to salute human rights, to salute freedom, to salute a difficult, flawed, but still correct decision to, regret, to resist aggression, and to salute the brave, free people of Iraq. He ad hominem attacks right from the start, putting words in my mouth that I never spoke, uh, you never said that. No, You're telling me you no, never said right, that. Not about Saddam. I didn't, and you know you very well. You stood next to him and said, you know, "Sir, I you know I'd salute very you very well that I didn't." Sir, I salute your courage, your strength, your indefatigability. We have to congratulate you on being absolutely 100% consistent in your support for unmentionable thugs and criminals. Mr. Zarqawi, their leader, of course, the Bin Ladenist leader, uh, was in Iraq before and was well known to have been in Iraq under the rule of Saddam Hussein. And I can tell you that no one gets in and out of Iraq at that level without the president knowing. And it's also true that a group affiliated with him, the Ansar al-Islam, a fundamentalist group, thought that its main job was to kill the Kurdish leadership in northern Iraq, the elected leadership, which is a strange target, I think, for a holy war. And it's also true that some of them came to Iraq after we threw them out of Afghanistan. Well. That's easy then. Leave them in control of Afghanistan. Don't mess around with these people. Don't make them angry. Don't make them mean. It's your fault. Now, this is masochism, uh, but it's being offered to you by sadists. And I should thank him, by the way, for eliciting uh, or allowing, allowing me to elicit, or you, perhaps, ladies and gentlemen, to elicit from him um, what I feared, but uh, didn't hope, but uh, in other words, a full declaration of support for the campaign of sabotage and murder and beheading I'm not any depth to which you will not sing. Shot down, shot down senior clerics outside their places of worship and continues as a campaign of mayhem to this day. Other no it depths will be, to which you will not sink. Mr. Galloway may have enough in his memory as a socialist, the, the, the name that he's begun to disgrace so gravely, so horribly. I told you, I, I told you I'm not here to support his democracy. I, I, I spit upon his democracy. This is not my democracy. The fact of the matter is, in spite of the uh, fraud which, and the uh, irregularities and intimidation, 12 million people, not 8 million by the way, 12 million people voted. And thousands of Iraqis voted outside Iraq. This was not a, an ideal vote, it was not a perfect vote, but the fact of the matter is, with all its imperfections, you can say that uh, it represents, to some extent, the desires of the Iraqi people. And we should not ignore that. 
Other no debts to which you will not sink.